Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Great to be here. Um, I've come all the way from California to speak to you today. Uh, Lucid is a, is a tech company in Silicon Valley, and we're a new electric car company. Uh, many of you would say, well, what's so special about that? Well, I think we'll show through the presentation what clearly differentiates us and how uh, advanced the technologies that electrification can allow, can be incorporated within the car, and the synergies between electrification, this new era of mobility, and uh, the user interface, and particularly the man-machine interface. So, what is the future of mobility? Um, what we're seeing, it's not, it's not clicking on for me. Uh, so, we're seeing some seismic trends. Um, this is not forwarding. Oh, here we are. It is leading. Sorry. So, um, we're seeing some seismic trends in, in the motor industry. And those are not just technologically, but they're also uh, social. We're seeing changes in the way uh, we move around as humanity. We're seeing the advent and the proliferation of the electric car. And I think that is very clear in many minds now how superior an electric car can be to its gasoline counterpart. We're also seeing the, um, the value of connectivity. Connectivity in many contexts, particularly in ride sharing, but in terms of the uh, user experience within the car. And we're seeing the advent of autonomy. We're seeing that at level two, two and a half at the moment. Uh, no one knows for sure when full autonomy will be upon us, uh, but it's going to come. It's an inevitability. And the point here is that these four mega trends are entirely synergous. They work harmoniously together in an alignment of stars that the motor industry hasn't seen maybe since uh, the, 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 uh, the early days, 100 years ago. Uh, so what is our view of, uh, of the future? Uh, is it some sort of dystopic view of pods that are going to be driving us around? It may be great for people who are not really having a love affair with the automobile. Or is there some way that we can capture this romance, this... Uh, the, 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 the glory of past, uh, the, the love we, many of us have and share uh, with, with the car, where it's more than just a tool for transportation. Well, actually, we feel at, at Lucid Motors that it's possible to combine the two, and we have a clear vision to become a global leader in advanced electric vehicles. And we do that with some um, humility, but we also do that with uh, a real technology that underpins our vehicles. Uh, we're, we're, we're well into creating the Lucid Air. We're running alpha prototypes at the moment of our new electric vehicle. This is, this is the Lucid Air. We have a 0 to 60 time, sub 2.5 seconds. It'll probably come about 2.3. We have 1,000 horsepower, and we have the range considerably over 400 miles. We have up to 700 kilometers mile at range. And that is with our in-house battery technology, which is world-leading. And the vision for the car was very clear when we engaged upon this project. And it was inspired by the travel experience of an executive jet. Uh, how could we capture that spirit, that, um, that sense of excitement, of refinement, of exclusivity, if the jet were to come down and run on the streets? And how could we do that? How could we transform a car into that experience? Well, of course, the key is electrification, and specifically the miniaturization of electrification, the miniaturization of a power plant from gasoline to electric means surely there's a lot more space for the occupants, for the experience, for an enhanced um, uh, uh, experience for the driver and the passengers alike through space, comfort, and the man-machine interface. So here's a little video of um, how we uh, approached 
redesigning the car, reimagining the car around a miniaturized electric powertrain. And surprisingly, although others have shown the, the virtue of electrification, I would contend that no other company has truly taken uh, this uh, miniaturization of electric powertrain and used it as a tool, as an enabler to enhance the vehicle as a whole and reimagine the three-dimensional layout of the car to make a lot more space, much more comfort, and a better experience. And the consequence here is that we have an incredible luxury interior space experience. And this car is not a big car on the outside. Actually, Lucid Air is smaller than a Tesla Model S. It's more of an E-Class Mercedes external footprint. It's shorter, it's narrower, and it's lower than a Tesla Model S. But it has more interior space than a long wheelbase S-Class Mercedes or a long wheelbase Audi A8. And that's really quite a remarkable uh, paradigm shift. It's using that miniaturization of the electric powertrain in an imaginative way that's made this breakthrough. Uh, now, we see uh, the, the future, a big part of the future, as autonomous driving. But we don't really know when that is going to happen, when we're going to get to level four, level five. Um, I'm very bullish as an engineer about the uh, widespread adoption and proliferation of electric cars, largely because of the cost model. We're going to see battery prices coming down very significantly over the next three, four years, and that's really going to drive the business case for more affordable electric cars um, uh, on a widespread um, basis. However, no one really knows when fully autonomous driving will be possible. But we're going to play in two areas. Are the three areas that are really going to influence it, the three enablers, the hardware, the software, and big data. We're equipping our car with a very extensive uh, set of uh, sensing uh, for a big data collection. And that includes uh, long-range camera and LiDAR and um, radar and also short-range derivatives of each to give this big data collection. And we will be able to download uh, overnight um, terabytes of data from each car, uh, from each customer car. And this is, again, a, a synergy where an electric car suits uh, big data collection because the, the, the electric car is being charged overnight. It's live overnight. It would flatten the battery of a gasoline counterpart. And we see, therefore, the future. The future of, that's flipped on two, uh, a future of a shared, uh, well, if you look at the corner at the bottom left, this is where we are today. Largely, we own a car and we drive that car. Uh, that's, that's me, and I use it for maybe an hour a day, and it's depreciating 23 hours a day. And we're gonna see a move, we're already seeing a move towards shared um, uh, mobility. We're gonna see a trend more to the top right here to this shared autonomy. And that's the area that we're gonna play in, and I think that's the shift that mobility is gonna to move towards. Now we've seen uh, in, a, in the recent years, not just the miniaturization of components, but the conflation of functionalities within those components, and a classic example is a smartphone. So can we use that sort of conflation of functionality here in the user experience of our car? And this is what we've done. We've combined uh, multiple touch screens for Lucid Air with some traditional manual hand controls. We think that the, the manual control still has a good place, but there's a sweet spot. Combining that with touch menu-driven uh, uh, displays with traditional controls. So when I'm driving, if I just want to adjust the temperature, I can reach for a traditional knob rather than have to go through a menu, which can be very distracting and take my eye off the road. The other thing here is that we have a, 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 a curved swept single piece of glass, which is backed up by three LCD displays. And that means that all the key functions, the driver functions, are on line of sight with the road and don't distract, don't distract away from safe viewing of the road ahead. We have a, a more immersive internet uh, connected screen here in, in, on the center console for more deep dive when driving situations allow eye off the road. 
Now, our, our, our philosophy is for a system which is connected, natural, and adaptive. Um, clearly, the connectivity is crucial. We see a seamless um, interaction from one smartphone into the car. There's is absolute natural connected transition uh, it, through that process of being out of the car with your phone to being in the car. It feels exactly the same and completely familiar, easy to use, natural, and, 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 and connected. So what I mean by natural is we have natural voice uh, commands in the, in the car. Now, uh, those of you who'd be familiar with um, Amazon Echo and products like that, um, we really believe um, there's a terrific value in that. But I also think that the automobile is the perfect place for such technology. It is a wonderful thing to have natural voice command uh, without um, losing concentration with the road and the experience of driving. Also, um, the, 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 the car is uh, adaptive. And what I mean by that is that it can adapt to your situations, adapt to your uh, schedule for if you wanted to, uh, for example, take a break and go for some, some breakfast somewhere on your way to work, the car would be able to adapt to your schedule. It would know your schedule, be able to um, make you aware of the implications of such a detour and uh, just keep you in track with your diary and your commitments through the day. Now, we combine all this experience, this user experience, with a truly luxury ex interior. And that is really something which is uh, quite, a, quite an interesting observation. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 the luxury vehicle really is still largely the domain of the grandee German automakers. The luxury sector is dominated by Mercedes, Audi, and BMW. Uh, and in a sense, although Tesla has come along and it's created a great product, um, I think Tesla's a high-tech product and it's premium. But I question whether it's truly luxury in the sense of um, um, Daimler, Audi, and BMW. And in a, therefore, if that is the case, one has to ask, is there truly a luxury electric vehicle on the market in the world today anywhere? And I would contend that there isn't. And I think there's a huge market for this sort of vehicle. Now, combine that, that open market space with the transformative interior that's possible through the miniaturization of the electric powertrain. And I think it offers a beguiling opportunity. And taking this, um, this, this uh, to the rear, we have two uh, rear seating uh, um, alternatives for the car. We have this executive rear seat package, which uh, for a car of this size is quite remarkable. It has a recline which exceeds that of a, a Maybach. We have 55 degree recline, super comfortable seating. All this in an executive size car, which is eminently usable in a big city environment. But uh, we also have uh, a standard bench seat uh, configuration, uh, which makes the car a traditional four stroke, five seater sedan. And this has in itself a great usability. It has a superior rear leg room to S-Class Mercedes. Now, one of the secrets here, just one of the secrets is that we've deleted the cells, the battery cells, underneath the rear occupant's feet. So there's a discontinuous array of batteries. The battery pack fits underneath the car, but unlike a Tesla, the, the array of cells is discontinuous. And yet, despite this, we can achieve up to 700 kilometers range. And that is because we've got a superior packaging density as a consequence of our cooling philosophy, which I really believe is world leading, which has enabled this teasing out of usable, comfortable space for the occupants. So uh, I think we, what excites me about this is that although um, the electric car now has been shown as a viable alternative, a superior alternative to internal combustion engine, we actually see that with that using this technology in an imaginative way, we can take the electric car to an even further height. Thank you so much.